Hey guys, GW coming to you live. Hey, uh, normally I'm not home. Today's Tuesday. It's about, I don't know, 12 o'clock. Usually at work. But uh, today I got hit with some nasty garbage. I don't know what it is. I went to work feeling fine. And uh, as the day, as the morning went on, I just started getting really crappy. My throat hurts. My body feels like I've been hit by a wrecking ball. So I can tell you this I'm not coughing. All right, and I'm not throwing up. So, hey, we're good there. You know what I mean? Fingers crossed. There is some nasty garbage going around. Um, so, I'm sitting here at home. I'm, like I said, usually working. And uh, I know people are going to go, hey, man, where are you at? You know, why aren't you here? Well, because I'm home. So, we're going to talk about a few things here today. Uh a lot of people have been asking me why I haven't commented on Matthew Perry's death. And I think that some of these news stories, and not just this one, I think that a lot of these things are covered to death, no pun intended, and you hear enough about it, you don't need me coming on and, and you know, jumping all over topic. But what I will say is that a lot of people may or may not know he had a lot of issues my wife has been following all the Friends gang, believe it or not, since the first episode of the show. And it's uh, it's bittersweet. I mean, if you look at what that guy survived, it, it's unbelievable. And uh, I don't know how he died. I'm thinking they keep saying cardiac arrest. Um, I don't know. But all I can say about him when someone says Matthew Perry, I think comic legend. I mean, he portrayed Chandler Bing like there was nobody else. And the thing about guys like Matthew Perry or Artie Lang, for that matter, is that they are in the spotlight. They are famous, but they never realize the level of fame or, you know, stardom that they have. And Matthew Perry would be the first to admit he never thought he was that successful. And that's that's like the comic fault. That's the ultimate irony is that you can be, you know, a huge superstar and you don't think that you're that, you know, famous. But we've been rewatching Friends and I got to tell you, you see little things that you didn't see the first time around, you know. And it just, the good thing is, is that show has been watched more times than most shows on the planet. So everybody's going to know about Matthew Perry and the Chandler Bing legacy. And they're going to see exactly what I saw the first time I watched Friends, is a comic genius at work. And Matthew Perry will be missed. But, uh, you know, so that's thing one. Thing two, we're just going to go down the list, no particular order. Uh, Eli Roth's new movie, Thanks Killing, looks like it's going to capitalize on the Thanksgiving Day holiday in the tradition of Friday the 13th. Now, I'm very skeptical about this movie. I want to see it. However, I don't know how it's going to go. So we're just going to wait and see. But it looks... Prominently Bloody and Gory. Another Bloody and Gory movie coming out next year that I can't believe I have to wait for is Damien Leone's Terrifier 3. Now, I saw the second one, and I'll tell you what, it was over-the-top, ultimate violence. And you know what? It grew on you. Art the Clown... Is just a creepy dude. And Damien Leone actually said he's going to end the franchise with a bang. So which leads me to believe when Terrifier 3 comes out. It's going to be the end of the line for Art Clown. Or maybe not. Maybe he'll appear in other movies. We don't know. So there's that. Um, and then I read this guys. The CEO of Disney has come out and said that Disney Plus is going to shut down after Christmas. And 
I'm thinking to myself, you know, you guys spent all this time getting this streaming service up and running. You put every Disney movie on there. Then you take it off because people protest. You take some of these movies off of Disney+. Plus. But regardless, Disney Plus is where you can find all the lost Disney classics. Such as a movie like nobody's probably ever seen, like Fuzz Bucket. 1980s Disney movie. Mr. Boogity, another one people don't know about. Bride of Boogity, you know. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. All these Disney movies were supposed to have a home. And then, I mean, when we first got it, the first day was awesome. Because I'm like going, dude, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Dude, I haven't seen that since I was five. With uh, Kirk Douglas, and it was great. And it was about Captain Nemo and the giant squid, and it made you feel like a kid again. And then all of a sudden, Disney did something really stupid. They started cleaning out all the movies, and they put a disclaimer: "Gone with the Wind." You know this this movie does not, uh, you know, it does not contain the views of Disney's corporation. You know what? When I was a kid. Everybody watched Gone with the Wind. Everybody watched, you know, these movies that had these stereotypes in it or these South characters or these little minor racial overtones. And you know what? Nobody said anything. And Disney started to get worse and worse. So now they want to take Disney Plus off your streaming platform. And here's the, here's the good part and here's the bad part. The good part is you want, they want to combine it with Hulu. They actually bought Hulu, guys. Yeah, Revelation, look that up. So they bought Hulu. So how are you going to integrate Disney Plus into Hulu? Well, they're going to roll out a prototype app in December. Now, it seems to me that if you have more work to do with an app, let it be. Just leave it separate like Discovery did, Discovery Plus. You guys remember that? The Warner, Warner Brothers HBO merger? Discovery Plus is still a standalone app, okay? But I don't know about Disney, guys. I don't know what they're doing. But he says explicitly in this article, parents be warned. So, in other words, Disney, the Disney CEO is saying, okay, Disney gave you all these memories as a kid, but now we're going to take them away, right? And don't fly with me. I think just leave Disney Plus alone. Yes, it's got quirks. Yes, it's got concerns. But you know what? At the end of the day, it's a good app. I like the thing. We watch AFV on it. The only thing I've told my wife, and I'm telling Disney, and if they ever see this video, you know, or hear about this, I wish. They bought America's Funniest Home Videos, right? Well, when Bob Saget passed away, they should have aired the original AFV videos. Remember those? They came on on Sunday. It was AFV with Bob Saget and America's Funniest People with who? Dave Coulier and Tawny Katane. I remember that. That's how old I am. I want to see those on streaming service. But you know what? If Disney's going to nitpick over everything, you probably won't see it. And it's going to suck. So I read that. And I was just, I was shaking my head. I'm like, why? You know, Disney has made a stupid amount of bad decisions lately. And they used to be a reputable company. Now they're just second rate whatever to me. You know, from jacking their, their vacation tours up to an ungodly amount of money you have to pay to recreate a Star Wars experience to banning cartoons that I've seen whenever I was a kid. It's stupid what they're doing. But I get it. you got to change with the time. So whatever. And I'm not going to get off on a whole rant about Disney. Because everybody knows my feelings on it. But I just wish you'd leave it alone. Keep the movies on it. And have kids across America. You know. Be able to turn on Disney Plus. And then watch something. Instead of jumping through hoops. Then you get the Hulu. And then you don't know how to navigate. So maybe they'll figure that out. I don't know. Um. What else is going on? What else is going on? Um, a lot of things been going on uh, lately in my life, personally. Uh, grandma's still kicking. She's 99. 
and she can put down a strawberry milkshake like nobody else. <coughs> oh shit, there's a coffee. Um, but uh and she's still kicking. She's still kicking. And uh it's it's bittersweet, you know, to see them in a nursing home or rest home. Because you're seeing the person you love, you're just not seeing in the environment that you grew up in, and that's that's really what you know really gets you. Um as far as movies go, I've been watching a lot of old stuff lately. Nothing new. I went back and because I'm pretty much of a masochist, <laughs> you know, when it comes to horror films, I've been watching uh, the August Underground series. And I'm looking at those films from a different point of view. Yes, it's got extreme gore. Yes, it's got things in it that really nobody should see. But if you look at it perspective of a filmmaker... And what he did, what Fred Vogel did with this amount of money was ungodly. He made a really disgusting movie, and it's still effective. It's effective because it's low budget. It's shot just in the right way. The camera work is amazing. And what I personally like about the films is that he did so much with so little. Kind of like the Howard Stern tagline. But I'm not telling anybody to go out and watch those because those are... Uh, they're in a the class all by themselves, needless to say. Um, now, I did see The Exorcist Believer played in the theater, and it got shuffled to home video very quickly. A lot of those things are doing that now. If you guys watched, it seems like the uh, the movies, all the remakes are, are just, you know, flying back to, to DVD, or not DVD, uh, streaming. Because no one wants to sit in the theater to watch it. It's like once they bomb in the theater, then they go right to streaming and who knows where they end up. But, uh, yeah, I have no interest in seeing the Exorcist movies. I was not a fan of the later ones, but the first three is the ones I grew up on. Exorcist, Exorcist 2, The Heretic... And The Exorcist 3. Those were the ones I grew up in. And there was something forbidden, classic, horrifying. And even in that first one, that first movie scared the crap out of me. Because I wasn't scared of the actual, you know, event. You know, devil takes over the girl. I was more scared that it could actually happen. Like, you could go to bed. This is what scared me about The Exorcist. You could go to bed, okay? You could be possessed by the devil in the middle of the night. And you don't know how the hell you got there or what happened. That's what terrified me. My sister, on the other hand, when she was about five or six, she did not like, I mean, honestly, God, did not like the fact that Linda Blair was all make up up looking like she's been through hell, which theoretically she was. And my sister would run out of the room on that. And that's a known fact. So hopefully my sister's tolerances are up pretty much good. Um, and I want to say one thing about video games. Two things, actually. Um, one, I started watching the UFC again. I don't know why I was bored, and I figured, you know what, let's let's see somebody get knocked out, right? So that led me to check out UFC 5, the EA Sports new iteration of the classic fighting games of, you know, the UFC. So I, my wife bought it for me, okay? And I started playing it, and I'm like, this is pretty fun. And I read the reviews, and they're all garbage. And I'm like going, this game is fun. If you take it for what it is, you come home after a hard day, you pick you pick your game controller up, you turn on UFC 5, you pick Ronda Rousey, you go against, I don't know, Holly Holm, and you fight in the Bloodsport Arena, right? Cumite Arena, whatever the hell it's called. You knock the crap out of her, and I like this year's model because 
it has more injuries. Like when you start kicking an opponent or really laying it in on their face, their face gets all swollen, cuts, blood drips. It's more realistic. So it's got an M rating, right? But you don't have to get crazy with the jujitsu to controls, the ground to pound and all that, the side control and all that crap. No, dude. You just go home, turn it on, hit stand and bang. That's just throwing punches. Everybody can hit A or B, lunge and whatever. Knock somebody out in the computer game. It'll make you feel better. And I really like the game. I'm actually going through career mode. And what's cool about career mode is you can pick any existing UFC fighter. You don't have to create nobody. So I'm going through it with Conor McGregor. Yes, the tutorials are a little bit crazy. But you know what? Once you get contracts, you can skip tutorials. Just do whatever. It's fun. And having not played one since UFC 3 back in the days... I picked it up, and you know what? I'm I'm having a really good time with it, and I don't understand the hate. Because, again, I play the game. It makes me want to watch UFC even more. So maybe I'm just a diehard fan, or maybe I like simplicity in my game. And I know what the big argument is. Oh, it's just like number four. You know what? I played number four after I played number five. And I get it. Everybody thinks that it was it needs a step up, and people are nitpicking EA games. But you know what? You're talking to somebody who bought every single hockey game for about four to five years, okay? And I did it not because I knew certain things would be enhanced, which was a plus, but the roster. I wanted to play as Sidney Crosby. I wanted to play as, you know, Malkin. I wanted Malkin to fight Brooks Orpik. And once they added, you know, Brooks Orpik into a game or into a different team, Hey, I was in. And every single time they got better with the Winter Classic. I can't tell you how many hours I've logged on just messing around, playing the computer, just beating the crap out of them. You know, and like in the first game that I bought, you could check them. The second game, you can check them and their helmets fall off. This is just an example. Third game, you can check them into the stands. Oh, let's do that. And it's simple things. And then the Winter Classic, same thing. The Winter Classic, every year, keeps getting better and better. So my point is, you know, I don't understand the hate when every game they improve on little things. And I'm used to it. I, I don't I don't hate EA because, oh, this could have been done, this could have been done. Because there's always room for improvement. So I don't understand the hate on UFC 5. I mean, I think it's one of the greatest games in the world. The other thing I'm going to tell you about... So I recently started playing Assassin's Creed Mirage. No, I did not buy it, although I'm really thinking about it. I bought it on U or I got it free with Ubisoft Plus, which I think is really a cool service. Again, I checked it out, and what you can do, guys, if you have an Xbox or PlayStation Five or whatever, you can get Ubisoft Plus. Takes a little bit to to log in, whatever. Buy it. It's like 18 bucks a month. But what you do. You can play all their catalog, every game that they ever made, right? If they if they bring out a new game, because they have, they have Star Wars Outlaws coming out, right? I'm going to play that for free on Ubisoft Plus. If I buy it from there off the Xbox store, I get a, a, a discount. So I've been playing Assassin's Creed Mirage. And I got to tell you, I'm not one... I've never played many of these. The only other ones I played were Valhalla and Origins or whatever one you're running around Egypt. This one, I cannot put the controller down. So between, you know, between, you know, days and, and work nights, I mean, that's what I'm doing. And I think it's a cool way. And like I said, I don't understand the hate on UFC 5. I think it's stupid. I personally like the game. I know a lot of people don't. And I don't like people that review games. Because if you review games, they'll always say the same thing. If it's not a Call of Duty, right, or a GTA game, they always seem to, or a God of War game, right? They always seem to trash it. And that's not right. So... But look, I'm going to get some Advil, y'all. I don't feel that great. And that was about the only burst of energy I had. Um, but, uh, yeah, hopefully, 
I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to be home tomorrow or not. I, I have no idea. <coughs> <coughs> oh, maybe cough medicine's in my future. What do you think? Um, but if I am home tomorrow, maybe I'll drop you all a line. But I know there's a lot of people that care about me. And uh, I just wanted to let you guys know what's up with me. Let you know about those couple things. And, uh, you know, hopefully you guys have a better day than I do. Peace.